I'm your host, Darren Heath. I'd like to take a moment and thank you for downloading, subscribing, and most importantly, listening to episode number 71 of the Gun Rights in Texas podcast. You can find the show notes by going to gunrightsintexas.com slash 071. Our carry tip for this episode is learn to use your weak hand for most tasks. Your strong hand is the one that you use to write with, shoot your weapon with, and basically do everything else with. Your weak hand is the other one. If you are left-handed, then you use your left hand to do these tasks. If you're right-handed, use your right hand to do these tasks. Whichever hand you use is considered the strong hand. The other hand is the weak hand. Now, when you carry a gun, you make changes to your lifestyle. One one such change should be doing tasks with your weak hand to leave your strong hand available in case you need to, I don't know, draw your weapon. Or if you need your strong hand to do something else now personally i have actually taken a taken a position of using my weak hand for a lot more things than a lot of people normally do i keep my wallet on my weak side i keep a backup gun on my weak side let's see what else i keep on my left side my phone my keys yeah i basically keep everything but my gun on my left side because i'm right hand dominant right hand and right eye dominant let me just point that out as a result if i'm taking my wallet out i'm doing it with my left hand and that means my right hand is free to go for my weapon if i need to or if something happens and i fall i can use my right hand to catch myself but no matter what my right hand is now open to do what i need it to do and that's the whole point of using your weak hand for mundane tasks like taking your wallet out or retrieving your keys Or maybe you're using it to pick up that piece of litter on the ground. But whatever it is, use your weak hand to keep your strong hand open. With that said, I'm going to run the audio clip that tells you how to get the podcast, and then we'll come back and we'll hit some listener feedback. The Gun Rights in Texas podcast is available on iTunes, on Stitcher, on Myro Player, YouTube, the website, and of course, in your favorite app using the RSS feed on the website. With all those options, there is no excuse for not subscribing. Links to all these can be found on every page of the website. Now, I have received a number of requests or responses to my request for what, for, well, I requested you tell me what you want to hear, and I've received a rather impressive list of responses. Now, topics that are now on the list to be covered include reloading, which had already been on there, but people want an episode dedicated strictly to reloading, and we're going to cover that. I don't know when, but we will get around to it. Now, we have another one that asks what to do when you're stopped and asks for ID. That one is probably going to be one that we need to hit before the first of the year, and that one's going to get bumped up on priority just for that reason. Then we have a request for us to cover the subject of restoration of gun rights and we also have a request for covering hunting let's see here now jackie wants us to cover interviewing a gunsmith or two i think i can arrange that i happen to know i happen to know a gunsmith but one thing that really find i find interesting and this is the similarity of emails from five people claiming they are part of open carry texas or that they are a gun control advocate now Each of these emails include reproductive organ comments, comments that could be taken as threats, and comments about my parents. And there's also the demand that I stop doing the podcast. Now, with that said, along with the history between myself and C.J. Grisham that started out okay and then went bad, it may surprise some people that I did not reply to those emails, probably because the email addresses are from throwaway accounts, among other things. I'm not going to waste my time on that. And that I really don't want to go into too much detail on C.J. Gresham and Open Carry Texas unless I'm provoked, at least until we know what his status is on his Senate campaign. If he withdraws from the running, if he loses, he becomes fair game. Part of this is because if he wins, I don't want to complicate the relationship between him and any guest I may have on the podcast. And remember, when it comes to politics, we want to make friends and not enemies. Now, failing at the making friends, we don't want to alienate potential allies. 
meaning if we can't make friends, we can at least be allies on on common goals. Now, I don't have any announcements for the podcast. I don't have any show news to speak of, but I do have to say that I am somewhat disappointed with some of the some of the open carry advocates and the gun banners that contacted the podcast. I really don't know why you would want to demean yourself with such language, but that's up to you. That's for you to decide on whether or not you want to do it or not. With that said, here's how to find the show on social media, and then we'll come back and we'll actually hit our topic. The Gun Rights in Texas podcast has a social media presence. You can like it on Facebook, you can follow it on Twitter, you can circle it on Google+, and you can follow it on Instagram. With all those options, let's get social. Now we're back, and we're actually going to touch on the subject of gun rights and gun groups. There's no shortage of gun rights-related groups here in Texas. Some are pro-gun, some are anti-gun, and some look like a shell game. And there's others that you can't quite tell what their intentions are. Now, I base what I observe as they being their primary objective on a number of things, including the observation of their statements, their website, past history that they have, past positions have taken on legislation and all. And we're going to kick it off with one that has caused me no small amount of heartache and headache and heartburn. And this would be Texas Gun Rights. Their name is very similar to the name of my website with this podcast, Gun Rights in Texas. In fact, their website is txgunrights.com. And they're actually a subdivision of the National Association for Gun Rights. And they claim to be the largest no-compromise gun rights group in this great state. This great state is a phrase I have used for quite a while. I have used it on other podcasts that I have done. Now, their primary objective, based on their website, is unlicensed carry. Keep in mind... That as an associate, as a not associate, but as a subdivision of the National Association for Gun Rights, just about everything you hear from them is probably going to be a falsehood. I have had people contact me asking me to take them off my mailing list, which I do not have. Turns out their mailing list is the Texas Gun Rights Groups or Texas Gun Rights Organization's mailing list, which is Dudley Brown's operation. I'm not going to go any further on talking about Texas Gun Rights or the National Association for Gun Rights. I just really do not like these people. And they they claim to be pro-gun. Don't get me wrong. Claims and actions are two different things. And to me, it looks like they're more of a tool to try and draw in pro-gun people so that Dudley Brown can use them to line his pockets and get support for other causes. Our next organization I want to touch on is Lone Star Gun Rights. Now, this is led by Justin Deloche, I believe it is, the third. Its primary objective is unlicensed carry. They were active in the last legislative session. The name, when I first saw the name, I actually thought they were the Lone Star Citizens Defense League, which was an open carry organization, and they folded, and we don't have to deal with them anymore. But Lone Star Gun Rights is a different organization, and it's really interesting that their name is very similar to the previous group's name. I do have to say that, you know, The unlicensed carry thing is going to be kind of a pattern here, and that is their primary objective as well. Then we have Texas Universal Carry. I don't know much about these people. They kind of popped up on the radar, and by popping up on the radar, I mean they were not there, and then suddenly they were. I don't know who leads them. Their website is a WordPress blog with a grand total of two entries. You would think if they were an actual gun rights group they would be keeping abreast of different things but they don't seem to be as for what their objective is i don't know i really don't know what their primary objective is can't really go from two posts and a mention of their existence from somebody well actually i've had three people mention their existence two are in closed facebook groups for open carry texas and the other one was somebody that said hey i saw them mentioned on a forum somewhere and I was wondering what you know about them, which kind of led to this episode. And then we have Come and Take It. Come and Take It is closely associated with the website don'tcomply.com. It's led by Murdoch Pizgotti. I assume I mispronounced that. The primary objective is, of course, unlicensed carry. 
you have to keep in mind with groups like Come and Take It, they choose a name that they feel is patriotic. And then they try to lure you over to their side in support of their name. This is a common libertarian tactic. You can see libertarians getting their name changed from whatever it is to names like Quanta Parker or George Washington or Abraham Lincoln. You see a lot of names getting changed in the libertarian movement. And these guys tend to use libertarian tactics, although they're more, they're more of an anarchist bent. And in the interest of full disclosure, I have had members of Come and Take It on this podcast, and I will say I've had at least one member of Come and Take It on this podcast. Let me rephrase that. And while I may be interested in, how do I put this? While I may be interested in promoting gun rights in Texas, I do not want to associate with these people because their means do not justify the ends. Their tactics do not justify the ends. And then you have Texas Open Carry. This is not Open Carry Texas. This is a different group where Texas is the first word of their name. They appear to, they had a website and it appears to be down. Their primary objective is unknown. And that's about all we know about them. We don't know anything about their history. They had, they had something, I believe it was posted. I'm trying to think here. I believe they had some kind of history posted to OpenCarry.org. In the Texas forum, I'm not sure. I'm not going to go bother looking it up either. But they have since had their website go down, and I have no new information on them. And then we have Open Carry Texas. And to my knowledge, they are now led by David Ahmad. Used to, they were led by C.J. Grisham, but he stepped down to do his Senate campaign. Although I have heard conflicting information on that, I have heard people refer to C.J. Grisham as the president of OCT still. I don't know if that's something that is not taking effect till a certain day or if it was something that was going to happen and hasn't happened now or if C.J. Grisham stepped down and then stepped back in. I don't know. I don't know what the situation is, but their primary objective is, once again, unlicensed carry. And then we have Open Carry Tarrant County. This is Corey Watkins' little group of flying simians that are excreted from an orifice in the lower half of the body. Open carry Tarrant County may now be defunct. This is because Corey Watkins no longer lives in in Tarrant County. Now their primary objective was, or maybe still is, unlicensed carry. But like I said, we haven't seen much in the news about him. Corey Watkins is no longer in Tarrant County, so I really don't see him being a leader of open carry Tarrant County anymore. So I don't know what their status is. I don't know what's going to happen to him, and I really don't care. And then we have Texas Carry. This is led by Pastor Terry Holcomb Sr. Its primary objective is advancing gun rights for Texans. And I have to say that they're one of the more reasonable open carry operations in the state of Texas. Now, let me say that I have had a I have had a person from Texas Carry, in fact, Pastor Terry Holcomb on the podcast as a guest, and I have had somebody or multiple people from Open Carry Texas on the podcast as guests, including C.J. Grisham. My thing is, a lot of these Open Carry groups, they've gone and used in-your-face tactics. They go out there and they make a statement based on what they feel and not what really is. For example, Open Carry Texas posted that Texas was the only state with a law that was similar to what California was trying to pass at some point where certain misdemeanors would prohibit gun ownership. However, the only misdemeanor that prohibits gun ownership in Texas, wait for it, is domestic violence, which is a federal prohibition. It does prohibit uh, having a license and if it's a class B or class A misdemeanor, that's something we can work on. We don't have to make a big stink and lie about uh, that prohibition being a prohibition on the possession of a firearm, but who knows? Texas Carry is a little bit above that level. They go out and they will take credit for anything they can. I don't, I really don't want to say they will go do something and take credit for it, but they, they were involved in passing open carry and they claim that they were responsible for it being passed altogether. Just like CJ Grisham and open carry claims to be responsible for the legislation being passed. And 
even starting the debate. Now, we do have the Texas State Rifle Association, which is led by Dan Butts. Keep in mind that a lot of people think it's led by Alice Tripp, but that's just the legislative side of things that's led by her. And we have had Alice on the podcast. I I have to say that she is a very nice lady, and I am happy to have... I am happy to have had her on the podcast. Now, their primary objective is advancing Texas gun gun rights for Texans. They also have training, safety, and competition as primary objectives. And one last pro-gun group I want to mention is the Texas Firearms Coalition, which is uh, led by Charles Cotton. And their primary objective is advancing Texans' gun rights. You may be thinking, well... Charles Cotton's name seems familiar, and if you go back a few episodes, you'll find an interview with him, and he's been a frequent guest on the podcast. I have to say, I enjoy having Charles on here. He's a good guy, and he's, you might might say he's dedicated his life to advancing gun rights, and I'm proud of him. I'm proud he's on our side. And then we have Moms Demand. This is Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense, or whatever they're calling themselves, but the Moms Demand part of their name stays the same no matter what. They're a national group but they have a Texas division and they're the whole group's led by Shannon Watts and Michael Bloomberg. Their primary objective is gun control. They're the first of the gun control groups I'm going to mention. And the reason I mention them is they seem to have focused a lot of their efforts on Texas as of late. And then we have another group called Texas gun sense. I don't know who, who leads them. Their primary objective appears to be gun control and well, they don't seem to be all that intent on actual gun safety. The idea of gun safety is no guns for good guys. You know what? I'm I'm not feeling too well. In, in fact, I don't know when this episode is going to be released, so I'm going to run the audio clip that tells you how to get in touch with me. Then I'm going to wrap the news up, and then I'll, we'll wrap the show up. With that said, here's how to get in touch with me. If you want to contact the podcast, please send an email to Aaron at gunrightsintexas.com. Or you can leave a comment on the webpage, which is gunrightsintexas.com. However, if you want to leave a voicemail and be featured on the show, then please do so by dialing 409-292-6736. Well, we're back for the news segment. And our news segment's really going to be more political than anything else. We're going to kick it off with the story how counties across the state are trying to get their gun bans inside or they're trying to keep their gun bans inside their courthouses by using what they claim are properly posted 30 out six signs but what gun advocates say are improperly posted 30 out six signs this is something i'll probably end up going to the courts but this article is about an attorney general's opinion and the funny thing about an attorney general's opinion is you don't you don't really know what he's going to come down for one rule of thumb is you don't ask for an attorney general's opinion unless you know what he's going to say. And another rule of thumb is you don't ask for an attorney general's opinion unless you don't want to go to court. Now, I have been told both of those by different attorneys. And I think we're going to see, I th- I think really the attorney general's opinion, re- the request for one, is more for how will he go about this? Will he prosecute it? Because if he thinks that these signs are valid, then he won't be prosecuting uh, these cases in civil court. If he doesn't think they're valid, then he will prosecute them, and you'll end up going to court. So I really think what they're going to do is, the reason they asked for it is to know, will he proceed with the lawsuits against us, or can we just go ahead and keep doing it without having to worry? And this is all because of the of the bill that we discussed with Charles Cotton. In fact, the next story is about it as well. The Houston Zoo has taken down their anti-gun signs. All it took was a new law that would have been the basis for or of a very expensive lawsuit for the city that owned the land if the signs had not come down. And then we have a story where a former, and this one's in the miscellaneous category, but a former NFL player who played for the Carolina Panthers and the Houston Oilers, he accused a Texas law enforcement officer of pointing his sidearm at his head. The officer did draw his weapon in response to the former NFL player reaching under his seat but he never pointed the weapon at anyone, much less at their head. Now, this incident demonstrates the need for officers to have cameras rolling to protect them from accusations that are false, such as this one. I have a lot of friends that are in law enforcement. I have a lot of friends that do that do things that they don't want law enforcement to know about. 
And when I say that, I don't mean they're doing things that are illegal. They're doing things that they feel is just not law enforcement's business. You know, these things that they're doing, mm, they're not illegal, but they're may, they may not be the most moral of things to do. And why do I consider these people friends? Well, I'll be honest. I've known them so long I can't call them enemies. Now, I do... I do have to admit, I have had some friends commit crimes, and while I still consider these people to be friends, they're not at the level where I trust them. If I saw a crime, would I report it? Yeah. If the crime involved a friend of mine, would I still report it? Yeah. If I saw a friend doing something immoral, would I report it to the police? No. Not unless it's illegal. Would I report it to the person who they were doing wrong to? Probably. Because it's the right thing to do. I have a very strict moral code. Now, I know this didn't come out the way I meant it to be sent to sound. I'll probably have to come back and touch on this later. But here's the deal. I have a moral code. I live by this code. I have a very strong sense of right and wrong. And if I feel something is right, I do what is right. If I feel something is wrong, I do not do it. With that said, I want to just go ahead and end this podcast before I dig this hole any deeper or end this episode. On that note, let me just say, please stay safe and carry responsibly. And, well, let's end this episode. So, here's the sign-off music. Thank you for listening to the Gun Rights in Texas podcast. Please leave a review on iTunes or send feedback to the host. Your input will be used to improve the show. Stay safe and please carry responsibly. For the after show comments, I was just going through email while the sign off music was playing and Bill Heights sent in an email. He said I could use his full name. He asked me to kind of paraphrase his very long email and I haven't read all of it. So give me a second. And that shouldn't take anywhere near as long as it sounds like it did, but, uh, or it seems, or it actually did because the program will trim a bunch of that off. Basically, Bill, Bill wants me to Bill wants me to talk about the the perceived war on police and more specifically about how open carry advocates seem to be the spearhead on that. Well, you know what? You got it. I will add that to the episode list or the planned episode list. With that said, stay safe and carry responsibly.